Hey guys, I'm Unblessed Data, and welcome to a new review. This time we're starting a new series, it's called Hannibal. This is Season 1, Episode 1. And yeah, so I decided to start reviewing this series because really, I really like Hannibal Lecter. One of my favorite characters of all time. It's really interesting, super cool. All the movies uh, with Hannibal Lecter, the books, just really, really awesome. So, now we got a new show uh, that just premiered about Hannibal Lecter, but it doesn't revolve around Hannibal Lecter. Um, so I'll just give you the basic rundown of what it's about. Basically, uh, this show takes place before the events of Red Dragon, the, the novel, and basically they alter the timeline a little bit, um, mainly because this is in modern times, but also because um, this basically the show's about mainly about uh, William Grant, which he's the one that catches Hannibal Lecter, and basically the first time they kind of get together, he captures him in in Red Dragon. But in this, they kind of alter it, and he's kind of working to him with him uh, on cases, and he doesn't like basically catch on right away that basically he's a cannibal. So um, that's basically where the premise of the show takes place. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna get right into the review now. Tell you basically a quick rundown of what happened, my thoughts, and yeah, you can share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments. I'll uh, and I'll answer them, no problem. So before we get uh, into the meat of it, I'll just tell you a couple of the actors and actresses who are in this show. Uh, Hugh uh, Dancy is William Grant. Uh, I think he did a great, great job. Everyone really did an awesome job in the first episode. I think their acting was superb, and I mean, it, it was really good. I think the overall feel of the show is really creepy, which it should be, and um, yeah, it's just really good. It really feels like Hannibal Lecter. I really have to say it does. It doesn't stray from it at all, and it's not as if, uh, and um, well, the actor that plays Dr. Hannibal Lecter is Mads Mikkelsen, or Mick Elson. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his uh, name right or wrong, but, you know, whatever. Um, I've seen him in a couple other things. I do like him. Uh, he's a pretty good actor. His accent is pretty thick, so it's, it's not really thick. You can still understand him, but at some points, it's kind of kind of gets mumbled up. But I think it, even that in itself gives it another, like, uh, edge of creepiness because just the, the accent really gives it another kind of flavor. It's re really cool. I actually like it. But he plays uh, Dr. Hannibal Lecter. I think he did a great job. And I think it's it's basically not... I was worried that it would be a copycat of basically Anthony Hopkins in, like, Silence of the Lambs. Because that was... He did, like, an amazing job there. And I was kind of worried that he would just copy him. But he really didn't. And he puts his own flavor on it. Plays, puts his own twist on Dr. Hannibal Lecter. And I think it turned out really good. And he still kept it really creepy. And another actor that, like, a big name is Lawrence Fishburne. And he actually plays uh, Jack... Carfold, and he's actually like uh, he works basically for this bureau of uh, of crime and everything, and he's basically running uh, the investigations. And I love him, you know, Matrix. He's um, what's his name, Morpheus. Lo and uh, you know, he's a great actor. I really like him. And um, yeah, he does a great job too. So let's just get right into the show and what happens. So right off the bat, we see William Grant, and he's basically reliving moments of a crime scene and he gets so into it that he actually uh, imagines him himself as the killer and we see some violent scenes of him basically as the killer killing the victims really cool and he basically has this problem where he doesn't emphasize with the uh with the victims or the killer at all and so he's kind of worried about that that he's not you know he's not responding to it so they bring in dr hannibal lecter who's a shrink to kind of look at him and yeah, so that's basically where that's going on, and that's how they kind of meet, and eventually we'll, we'll, we'll uh, take Lecter in, but that's going to probably be way from now. Um, and hoping that they keep the show running, because this network has a really bad um, tendency to cancel shows, so I hope this stays, because I really liked it. Uh, but anyway, we see him right at the beginning, and he's reliving a scene, and you know, there's blood on the walls and everything, and it kind of just like... Um, this like kind of, I don't even know how to say it, like a filter zooms by and things that are there in the present disappear and he kind of imagines himself in the in as the killer. So it was really cool, I really liked that. Um, and basically so he reacts, killer's moves, and he describes things in great details, similar to what uh, Hannibal Lecter does, so that, that was really cool. And we find out that uh, William Grant is actually a teacher at 
an FBI academy in Virginia. So he's actually a teacher, and he kind of does this also. And um, so he, yeah, so he was te he's teaching a bunch of people, and that's when uh, Jack uh, Jack Carford comes up, and he kind of asks him, you know, we need your help on the case. Um, so basically, he says yes, and this is basically what he does. He psychoanalyzes people. Um, well, that's what uh, Dr. Lecter does, but he, he basically makes a profile for the killers, and it helps them track them, helps them catch the killers. So basically, we find out that eight girls have been abducted, <laughs> and um, uh, they're all this really similar. They all have the same hair, same eyes, same height, same age. So, we, you know, he obviously sees that right away and says, okay, that's going to be a big thing here. Like, that has something to do with something. And they go and visit one of the victims, the eighth victim's parents, and he, you know, he does some digging around, uh, Will, Will, Will does, and he goes into the girl's room, and the dad says, you know, she's not, you know, she, uh, last time she was here, blah, 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 and he opens the door, and her dead body is actually in her bed, and it looks like she's sleeping, and that, you know, that was, uh, pretty creepy, you know, seeing a dead body just there laying there. And basically, um, he relives the killer's movements again, and he kind of figures out that she was choked. And again, we see him choking her like he's the killer, because he's like so into be, like finding out what the killer does and everything. So that's it's really violent. It's really creepy and violent. It's not extremely violent, though, but it's, it's pretty violent. It has a creepy tendency. And we basically find out that the killer, whoever this killer is, put the body back because he feels sorry for it. Like, it was kind of like a mistake. And, um, yeah, and there's something really weird... I don't know if this will come up in another episode or something, but uh, Will goes back home, basically, and he finds a stray dog, and he brings a stray dog home, and he has a bunch of stray dogs, like, in his house, just, like, sleeping there. So, it was kind of random to me, but, I don't know, maybe it has a connection in some of the movies or something, I don't really know. Um, and we keep on seeing that he, William, is having these visions of, like, blood, and he's seeing the victims, and so it's really affecting him, you can see that. And that's basically why they bring in the shrink, and the shrink is dog Hannibal Lecter, so that's where he comes in. But as you can see, it doesn't really revolve around Hannibal Lecter, it's more about uh, William Grant, but again, his relationship to Dr. Lecter is he basically catches him in the end, because we know Hannibal Lecter is, like, the, be the greatest serial killer ever, and yeah, so... Um, this the killing of this girl and was brought back to her own house and put in her bed we find out that again like i said it was kind of a mistake the killer brought her back that's what uh, william kind of figures out and he basically says he you know he must have loved someone that has like that looks like this and 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 um that that's kind of something that they have to think about like okay so they're kind of building up a um a file on this on the killer trying to figure out who it is and, and um, they found some evidence on the actual robe of, like, it's like a sleeping, like, robe or something of the, of the girl that was killed, and it was a piece of metal. It was like a, um, I can't remember what it's called, like a shaven piece of metal from, like, a factory or a work site. So now they have a kind of a lead on that. And another theme that was in this episode is that all the people that were killed that were found have antlers that were, like, put through them as, like, almost like as hooks, and we see some images of that, it's really disgusting, but, you know, so they find that, so that kind of brings them to another uh, road to see, to find more evidence, um, but then we see Alana Bloom, who, who is actually uh, another character in, like, the Hannibal Lecter movies and stuff, and she's basically a colleague of uh, Jack Crawford, so, and she basically talks to him and basically says, you know, don't let Will get too close to the violence, to everything, because he'll basically go insane. And that's basically what, uh, she, like, she's saying, like, promise me Jack won't get too close. And, uh, so, he does, though, later on, we'll find out about that. But, at this point, uh, Will basically figures out that whoever the killer is is actually eating the victims, because the liver was taken, was taken out of of this uh, girl that they found in the bed dead and was put back because actually has liver cancer so you know it's kind of like a mistake I can't eat her or put her back and that's basically what it was at this point we see a man and just classic music on and he's you know preparing a meal and we can see that it's Hannibal Lecter and he's eating and it's it's just so creepy and I think they did it so well I love the classical music thing that's like a trademark of Hannibal Lecter and just the way that the facial expression that uh, the actor had was just really great I really liked it um, and we see that he's a shrink Hannibal Lecter and he's you know he's going through a patient and everything 
And then uh, Jack comes in, and he basically says, you know, I need your help with a, uh, a profile, a psychological profile of a, of a guy. So Lecter says, okay, and Lecter kind of goes with him and meets William. And they have clash immediately, because they're basically both do the same thing. So you can see that, uh, but Hannibal Lecter is, like, way better at psychoanalyzing than... Uh, Will so he immediately finds out all this stuff about Will just from looking at him and Will gets really creeped out and kind of just leaves right away and um, We actually kind of assume right now and we obviously we know this that uh, Hannibal Lecter is actually the killer and he's eating his victims. That's why he's a cannibal, but um, you know, Will obviously doesn't know this at this point But that's gonna be the ultimate goal of this show is go to the point where Will finds out that Hannibal Lecter is the killer so, at this point, we've, another body is found, and it, again, it's impaled by antlers, and he took her lungs. So, the lungs are missing, and then we see another clip of uh, Hannibal Lecter, and he's, he has, like, a cutting board. He's, like, you know, has, like, a little apron on in his kitchen, and he has just a thing, a pair of lungs right there, and he's just cutting them up nice and neat. It was really creepy, but it was so awesome. I really like how they, again, I just love how they portray uh, Hannibal Lecter in this. And at this point, William basically figures out that he must have a daughter that looks like these people that he's killing. And, you know, he can't stand the thought of losing her. Um, and that's why he's killing these people to kind of, like, forget about that. And, uh, again, we see more visions of... Uh, and William's having these visions, so we can see he's getting more paranoid. Um, then, uh, Lecter shows up at uh, Will's house, and he brings over food. And they kind of eat and have a conversation. At this point, I'm thinking Hamble's... And the food is meat, and it looks like the lungs he just cooked up. So I don't know if Will was eating lungs, I don't know. But that's kind of creepy just to think about that. Um, after that, they basically, uh, Will and Hannibal Lecter go to a construction site to find more clues about um, who this killer was, and they found the clue of the piece of metal that was on her, on the robe of the victim, so they're going to construction sites just looking for anything out of the ordinary. So basically he's looking through files that this... Uh, construction site has, and he finds one that has uh, a man that works there that has no telephone listed, no address listed, so he's saying, okay, this guy seems a little, you know, sketchy, let's check him out, and he says, uh, this guy's name is Mr. Hob, uh, Hobbs, which is actually in uh, the novels, uh, the Red Dragon novel also, and we can see that, um, so again, they're connecting the universes, but it's in modern time, and they did change a little bit, but again, they're still using characters, and kind of the same, uh, situation and storyline of Red Dragon, but, you know, um, so yeah, it's Mr. Hobbs, and there's no phone, no nothing, so then, uh, so then William leaves this little place, but Lecter goes and picks up a phone and calls, uh, someone, and a young girl answers, and this young girl looks like all the victims that have been killed, and she gives it to, um, a man, and Lecter call, uh, is talking to this man, and he's saying, uh, and it's Mr. Hobbs. He says, hello, Mr. Hobbs here. And he says, uh, Lecter basically says, this is a courtesy call. They know. So you can always see that he, you can obviously see that Lecter was working with Hobbs. And yeah, he kind of gave him a warning that they're coming to go investigate. So at this point, Will and um, Hannibal Lecter go to Hobbs' house. And right about when they're about to open the door to go in, Hobbs throws out a woman and her neck is actually sliced there's blood everywhere and she's dying right in front of will will's trying to save her but can't do anything so then will runs in with a gun he had a gun on him and all the time uh like throughout this whole time um hannibal lecter's kind of just walking just you know like nothing's happening just looking around like whatever so calmly it's, it's just so creepy i love it um so basically will just runs in and he sees hobbs and he has the girl that we've seen in the, in the call, and he has her, a knife to her neck, and Will just immediately starts shooting at him, uh, shoots him multiple times, he's on the floor dead, but he did slice the uh, girl's uh, neck, so she's on the floor with a sliced neck, and we see all this, it's really disgusting, and Will's trying to, like, you know, uh, trying to stop the bleeding and everything, but he can't, then Lecter just walks in casually, puts, her hand, puts his hands on the girl's neck, stops the bleeding, and the ambulance comes and takes the girl away. Before this, we've seen Hobbs, and he's about to die, and he just kind of gives this creepy smile to Will, and it's just really creepy. So we can see something's going on here, but we don't know. Um, then Lecter goes away in the ambulance with uh, the girl, 
and Will's kind of just by himself, and he just has this really scared look on his face, like, what am I getting myself into? And this is what, uh, before, uh, Lana Bloom, which is a co-worker of Jack, um, which, who is Morpheus, <laughs> um, she said, like, don't let him get close to all the violence and everything, and he did, so that's kind of what happened here. And, um, we find out that the, the girl there is still alive, but, um, before this, we see Grant, and he's not teaching anymore, so we can see he's really disturbed at this point. And Grant goes to the hospital to visit this girl that was, you know, neck was sliced, and Lecter is there, Hannibal Lecter's there, and he's falling asleep next to her, like, in the hospital bed, and he's just, just holding her hand, and that's kind of where the episode ends. So, yeah, great episode. We can see that uh, Hannibal Lecter has some relation to the, this girl. Uh, I don't want to make any assumptions from the movies, because, again, they're kind of going a different path than the movies, so I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to really spoil anything anyway. Um, but overall, great episode. Love the creepiness, love the atmosphere, love the actors. It was perfect. In my opinion, it was really good. I just hope they don't cancel it. I, I want a couple seasons out of this, so... Again, I was really happy with this. I really want to know what you guys think. Uh, tell me if you really like the show, if you don't like the show. Just your thoughts on this episode overall in this premiere. I thought it was great, but I really want to hear yours. Leave it in the comments below. So I just want to say thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. You can check me out on Twitter, at UnblessedData, and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.